you aren't using Google correctly. And that's because you've never heard of Google dorking. Google dorks are particular tricks that use the advanced search features of Google for gathering open source intelligence reconnaissance. These searches make use of the large number of keywords provided by Google that allow us to refine our searches for very specific and useful information. For example, if I wanted to try and find the admin login portal for siteexample.com, I could try using the Google dork siteexample.com and in URL admin or in URL login. And this would provide me with Google search results only for the website example.com and the title of the web page, including either admin or login. Hackers and penetration testers will use Google dorks like this one to gather information about their target, helping them discover specific files, login pages, employees to target, and even confidential information that may have been accidentally published. Google dorking can also be very useful for everyday people looking to find specific information more efficiently. In this video, we'll cover the more popular Google dorks and their use cases, so you can start using Google search to its fullest potential. To give a more in-depth definition to Google dorking, it is a technique that uses advanced search operators to find sensitive information, misconfigured websites, and security vulnerabilities indexed by Google and other search engines. Google dorking is also known as Google hacking. A note of caution before you start Google dorking, Google dorking itself is not illegal, but how you use it determines its legality. Google dorking has the power to find web pages and information that you are unauthorized to visit or see. Make sure you are only using Google dorks to find publicly available information, or if you're doing a penetration test or bug bounty, that the sites you are running dorks against have given you permission to do so. To get a list of the many Google dorks that are available to us with examples, we can take a look at the Google dorks cheat sheet provided by StationX. If we scroll down to the scope restricting dorks, we will get our first set of filters that we will most commonly use to create our advanced searches. The site filter will limit our searches to only the domain that we provide it. For example, if we only wanted to receive Google search results from Walmart, we would put into our Google search site colon walmart.com. Once we hit enter, we can examine the search results and we see that every single result that comes back is going to be from the domain walmart.com in some shape or form. The second filter on the list is file type or ext for extension. Using these filters, we can limit our search results to only give us links to specific files such as PDFs, Word docs, Excel spreadsheets, log files, or text files. For example, if we only wanted to search for log files, we could use the search file type colon log or ext colon log to do so. And if we were to click on any one of these search results, for example, this GitHub search result, the extension of the page that we're brought to is going to end in .log. If we wanted to only search for PDFs on the walmart.com website, we could use the search site walmart.com file type PDF and our search results will only give us the PDFs on the walmart.com domain. If we wanted our search to only look for keywords across a specific social media platform, we can use the at symbol to do so. All we have to do is type at and then the social media platform we want to search through, followed by any keywords. This filter supports platforms such as Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Reddit. So if we wanted to search only YouTube for Cyber Ryan, we could use the search query at YouTube Cyber Ryan. Now we see that all of our results come from YouTube, and the results will contain pages that are related to the keyword Cyber Ryan. Moving on to informational dorks, if we want to find any other websites that link to the site we are researching, we can use the link filter to do so. For example, if we wanted to search for other websites that have a link to target.com somewhere on their page, we would type link target.com dash site target.com. The dash site target.com part of this filter will look for target.com on all their sites other than target.com itself, so that way we may be able to find any affiliated websites. And in the search results, we see all websites that are not target.com that should contain a link to target.com within them. For example, Target's X or Twitter account. When we open that, we do see that they have a link to target.com on their page. This next filter has varying success, but we can use the related tag to find results that are related to the site that we're researching. So if we wanted to find websites related to cisco.com, we could use the search related cisco.com dash site cisco.com. And this should give us search results for everything related to cisco.com that is not the website cisco.com itself. So for example, we found Cisco's LinkedIn, Cisco's Wikipedia, some Reddit pages talking about Cisco. And I found that if you don't include the exemption of the site you're targeting itself, you'll just receive results of the site instead of sites related to it. Moving on to the text related dorks, we can find all web pages that might include specific keywords in their title by using the in title filter. The title of the page is what can be seen when you look at the name of the tab of whatever page you're accessing. So for the Google Dorks cheat sheet, it would be Google Dorks cheat sheet 2025, how to hack using Google. So if we were having trouble finding the login page for cisco.com, we could use the search query site cisco.com in title login. And the search results should give us all cisco.com web pages that have login in the title to make it easier for us to find how we can log into the website. The filter in URL does something similar to in title, except this time we are only looking for the search terms on the URL of the site. 
Going back to our login page example, if we knew that the site is running PHP as its backend, we could use the filter in URL login PHP to potentially find any login pages. And we see exactly that in our search results. All of these web pages have URLs that contain login.php within them. The in-text filter will only display results that contain your search terms in the body of the web page. The body being anything on the actual web page that you can read yourself. If our web page we are searching for needs to include the text Cyber Ryan, we could use the filter in text colon Cyber Ryan to get those results. And after hitting enter, we can see the expected results of things like my YouTube and TikTok. If there are multiple search terms that all need to be included in the title, URL, or text of a web page, we could use the filters all in title, all in URL, and all in text to easily search for all of those multiple terms. This saves us time by not making us have to do multiple in title, in URL, or in text filters if we want to use multiple different keywords. The last interesting filter I'll discuss is the cache filter. This allows us to see older, cached versions of websites if they are available. You probably won't be able to find much using this filter, but it is an interesting one to give a look every once in a while. Now that we've discussed the majority of the search filters that I find to be useful, let's talk about search operators that we can use to combine those different filters and create even more advanced searches. The true power of Google hacking is in combining multiple operations into a single query. And this can be done with operators like the ones when you're doing logical math. So if we need to perform a search that requires both the site to be example.com and the title of the page to include login, we could use the and operator to do so. And the filter would look something like this, where we have site colon example.com and entitle login. If we're looking for results that include a multitude of different terms, but not necessarily all of them, we can use the or operator. To build off of that last example, if we wanted to search example.com for login pages or admin pages, we could use the search site example.com and in URL admin or in URL login. We can include parentheses to group specific search filters together. So this search is always going to be looking at the website example.com, but the URLs can include either admin or login. Finally, if we want to exclude specific results, we can use the not operator or minus sign, which we showed a little earlier. In a previous example, we wanted to find websites that had links to target.com, but did not include target.com itself. And to do that, we could use the search query link target.com hyphen site target.com. And once again, the search results are all websites that are not target.com, but include a link to target.com. Lastly, if we wanted to search for any specific search terms that have a space in it, we need to put quotations around those terms in order for the Google dork to behave as we expect. For example, if we needed to search for terms of service in the body of a website, we would have to type in text colon in parentheses terms of service instead of in text colon terms of service without the quotations. This first query with the quotations will group the three words terms of service together so that they all must be next to each other in the page. And here we see the search results for that. If we were to remove those quotations, we'll only look for the word term in the body of a web page, and the words of and service could be anywhere else and not necessarily together. The results for this specific example aren't too different, but as we can see with the quoted terms of service, every single result in this little body portion is going to contain the term terms of service, and the terms of service should also be bolded in each of one of these results. But once we remove those quotes, that terms of service is no longer bolded, and we may see text in each of these search results that doesn't even include terms of service within them. Like for this example, we don't see terms of service in this body portion, just TOS, and the text being highlighted is a legal agreement that establishes the rules and guidelines for using a digital platform. If you're feeling a little uninspired to think of your own Google dorks, ExploitDB has the Google Hacking Database. This page includes the many Google dorks that other ethical hackers have already come up with, and can be a great way to get some ideas for some Google dorks yourself. Like this top one here is going to look at github.com for any OpenSSH private keys, which would be a very serious disclosure of confidential information. And this top one up here is looking for any .com site that contains invoice in its URL. So again, disclosure of some more sensitive information. All right, that's it for this video on Google dorking. If you enjoyed or found this video useful, please leave a like because it helps the channel out a lot and subscribe for more cybersecurity content. If you want to talk about cybersecurity, feel free to leave a comment on this video or join my Discord to reach me and the rest of my community. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.